Hey guys, we are back in the booth here at Create Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin, and today we're going to talk about more candy. Um, it's because we've been doing a lot of these videos, and we've been spraying a lot of candy in a, in a majority of these videos, we still get a lot of tech questions, and uh, we're hoping to kind of address some of the common questions that we have been getting. So, we're going to start off with some candy that we're going to spray. Before we do that, I have some base coat colors that I sprayed. So this is metallic white. This is metallic white over Audubon Sealer White. And I have gold. So this is gold over Audubon Sealer White. This is our Wicked Gold over Audubon Sealer White. This is our Silver Sealer, our Audubon Silver Sealer, just right out of the bottle. And this is our Audubon Sealer Silver with a little bit of our Wicked Transparent Black mixed into it at a four to one ratio. So it was four parts silver to one part black to get this really nice graphite kind of a color. So what we're gonna do in this video is show you guys how these different base coats, these ground coats, the underlying coat, is gonna change the appearance of the candy. That's one of the questions we get. We get a lot of questions in terms of like color matching and what blend of candy, and a lot of times you can get rid of blending the candies, actually mixing candies, and get the color that you're after by changing the ground coat. So it's not actually mixing the candies together, it's what the candies are going over. So that's why we want to do this video real quick and show you guys how drastic these ground coats are going to make this blood red. And for this video, we're spraying blood red over these four bases. So again, talking about ratios, um, we're going to mix, or oh, I already have it mixed up, our blood red with our 4050. This is our go-to carrier, the medium for the candy, the vehicle to get that candy onto your panel. Uh, six to one, that's my ratio. Six parts being the 4050. So six parts to one part candy 2.0. That's another question we get a lot about in terms of ratios and sometimes you guys are getting the ratios reversed. So it's more candy to less 4050, that's going to be really concentrated. A, it's going to be really thin in terms of viscosity, and B, it's way too concentrated. So the rule of thumb is I like 6 to 1, that's a, a general, a good starting point. Certain colors are going to be easier to spray, so if you start getting good coverage, you can actually go ahead and double it. You could bump up your ratio, so you can go from 6 to 3. So you can go 3 to 1 for your last couple coats, depending on how the, the color is covering and how how the, the ground coat, uh, the concentration of the candy is going to affect uh, the ground coat. So like going over something really bright like this metallic white is going to be more difficult than going over something darker like this, this graphite or even darker than that, so especially if you're color king. So if I was doing candy red over a pearl red, it's going to be really easy to get a nice even finish and you're not going to notice any kind of modeling as much as you would over something very bright like the white. It's going to show everything. And if you guys have sprayed candy, you know the candy is extremely uh, difficult to spray in terms of making sure you're very exacting with your distance off the panel, your overlap, um, your air pressure, the fan adjustment, everything is really critical to get a nice even finish. So six to one, six parts 40-50, one part candy, that's my starting point and it's actually kind of nice because if you do those ratios it pretty much equals a four ounce bottle to 32 ounces. So this is it. If you're going to mix this entire bottle it would be one bottle of this to one 32 ounce bottle of 4050. And if you had a gallon of 4050, it would be about 16 ounces. So that's a kind of a nice even ratio to start with, especially if you're wondering about coverage or how much, how far it's going to go, or what's, how much should I get for this project. It's kind of a good starting point. You know that four ounces is going to go to 32 ounces. So we are going to get plugged in and set up and spray. My color's already mixed. And that's the other thing is make sure when you guys mix this candy, um, you let it sit for about 10 minutes. So mix the candy into the 4050. Really let it sit, stir it up nice, and always strain it. Always strain your candies. Uh, there's, there's always you know, a chance of, of making sure there's no contamination in your candy and, and, and ma just making sure everything is clean. You always get that dry stuff at the top of the cap and the last thing you want to do is let that fall into the paint and then you're going to be wondering why sometimes you have some spitting and that's part of the problem is it could be just dried candy. So always strain everything. Uh, if you're using the PPS cups like we are here, these are the 200 micron. These are the solvent based ones. These are 200 microns and we have strainers that are 125 and 190 microns. So for water, water is a little bit thinner in terms of the thickness of the paint so you always want to be right around that 190 to 200 so we are going to go ahead and I'm going to get plugged in get the booth running and we're going to start spraying some candy 
Okay guys, we are back, the booth is running, and we are ready to spray. So my first ground coat is going to be that coarse metallic white. So we're gonna do one coat over this, and then we'll move through the panels. You guys can see what that looks like. We're probably gonna do four to five coats to get a good color saturation, but we'll see, we'll kind of gauge that as we put more material on and see. So this is coat number one. Okay guys, coat number one is dry. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes. Again, we are in a booth, so it's a controlled environment. Uh, it's about 73 degrees in here, and we're like 55% relative humidity, which is like ideal conditions. So if you're spraying open air and it's colder or it's you know more humid, obviously those conditions are gonna dictate what your dry times are. That's another question we get. We get a lot of how you know time between coats and time to top coat. So if you have a little bit of air movement, that's ideal. It's just a gentle fan blowing over the top of this is going to make this dry a lot faster. You don't want to force anything. You don't want to, a lot of guys like, uh, you know, use a spray gun and, and you'll try to dry this, which is fine, but the, the problem is you start getting tip dry as well. So you'll dry this and you go spray another coat and you might have something spit off the, the nozzle of your gun. So just kind of keep that in mind. So uh, we're ready to go coat number two. So this is coat number two. You can see as I'm putting this on, it's just a nice medium fast hand movement, nice overlap, 75%, just a medium wet coat. And that's key to really getting this candy to lay out nice and even and smooth. We are back, coat number two is dry, and I think actually this is looking pretty good at two coats. So we're probably gonna do three coats on everything. We'll let these dry up, we'll get them cleared, and you guys can see what they look like. So this is coat number three. Hey guys, welcome back. We are back in the booth. Our panels are all cleared and dry. So we're gonna do a quick little recap um, over what we did in terms of the bases and, and how we sprayed those candies. So we'll go from dark to light. So this is the first, this is the ground coat on my first panel here. So this was that silver that we made. It's a graphite color. So that was right here. Now, if you remember, that was our silver sealer, our 6013, our Autoborn silver sealer, three to one with our um, wicked black. So it was three parts silver to one part black and that's what gave us that graphite color. So that's the blood red over that. And then moving on, this is our blood red over the silver sealer straight. So it's straight out of the bottle silver sealer with the candy 2O blood red. And you can see it's definitely a little lighter in terms of the value. This is the blood red over our wicked gold. So this right here is actually what you would consider a true candy apple. So anytime you're spraying candy, 
Uh, it's just candy if it's over silver or another color, but the technical term for a candy apple finish is over gold. And you can definitely see, I don't know how well it'll translate on camera, but it's got a warmer, warmer, richer tone. It really, the gold really brings out that red. And then the lightest one is our very last one. Really bright too, but this is over our uh, wicked metallic white coarse. So this is certainly the brightest out of all of them. It actually looks a little lighter in terms of the color saturation, but that's just because of the brightness of that white metallic. So that wraps that up. I just wanted to take a moment too to talk about one of the reasons we made this video um, was because of the questions that we get in terms of what candies do I mix to get this particular color? And it's not always a candy that's mixed. It's a lot of times it's the candy is neat, but it's over a different base coat or a different ground coat. And you can see how much just that darker silver, that, that metallic color and, and a light metallic white, what kind of an extreme spectrum you get in terms of light value to dark value. So a lot of times it's not actually the candies that are blended, it's the ground coat. So the other thing I want to talk about is we're always big on doing like test panels and spray outs and you don't have to have a panel like this, you can just use a card, but if you're going to go ahead and, and go through the hassle of mixing the color and spraying it out, at least do something so you can keep that. Now you have a color reference every time. So like on the back side of all these, I have written down exactly what I did. So I have my, my silver sealer mixed three to one with the black, and I did four coats of the candy blood red mixed six to one with our 4050. So now I know every time, like this is exactly what that's gonna look like. There's no questions about it. So you, it's a good thing to have in your toolbox, you know, for your color library, at least you have something tangible. You could show a customer or show uh, yourself, really, if you're like, man, I remember, I don't remember what I did when I mixed that the last time. At least now, again, you're taking the time to do that letdown panel, that test panel. You might as well clear it and, and write what you did on the back. So now you have something, you know, just another color reference that you can add to your, your color library. So. Again, candies, 40, 50, and, and really it's the ground coat that changes the value of that. So this has been another episode of Color Mixing with Chris. We are at Createx Studios, and we will see you guys next time.